Hi, everyone. Welcome to Momversations. I'm so excited, you know, to be here today. We've had an idea here at St. Anne's. I've been interested in having an opportunity to have a Momversations experience. And today, I'm so excited to be here as president and CEO of St. Anne's to talk about motherhood. Our organization is founded in motherhood. Years ago, over 111 years ago, we were founded as an organization that provided services for young mothers who came into the program. We were a maternity home back then, but now we've evolved into so much more. There's a variety of programming that goes on. And Momversations was truly an idea that really stemmed from the fact that we've been work with, working with young mothers, and we want to bridge that gap because the issues that are faced by mothers in general, mothers who are young, adult mothers, there are so many themes that overlap. And the more we can come together and have an opportunity to see how much more we are alike than different, it's an opportunity for us to have a, a greater partnership, a greater relationship with our community. So today, St. Anne's is providing services, early childhood education services, for over 600 families in the Los Angeles area, making sure that children are getting the educational supports that they need for Head Start. We provide housing. Many of you know about our housing services, and those services are really an opportunity to have youth that have come to us from the foster care system. Then we provide them an opportunity for housing, you know, we provide parenting skills. I always tell people, we're not about promoting teen parenting or pregnancy, but we deal with what has already occurred. So when a young person has a child, we want to make sure they have all the skills and the opportunities to be able to be successful. So we have housing for our young women who are in foster care. We have transitional housing for our, our Tay age youth. And we also have an amazing permanent supportive housing program where we have families, um, mothers, children, single dads actually in our permanent supportive housing. We also provide mental health services. And in a time like this, where we're all experiencing the stress and the anxiety related with the COVID-19 pandemic, those services are available to those who live on our campus and those in our community. So I'm so excited to be able to talk about all the things we do, but really have an opportunity to talk about motherhood and parenting in this time. You know, we can talk about our workforce development, we can talk about all these different things, but we need to know what you're thinking and we want to be a support to the community. We're an essential organization. You say, I hear about first responders, I hear about the amazing nurses and medical folks who are out there, but do you recognize that people and our staff at St. Anne have been working? They have been either on campus or tele, you know, commuting, but we've been providing services as an essential organization. And so it's important for you to know that we're here, we're working with you, and that St. Anne's whether it's our counselors, whether it's our teachers, whether it's the people who are here daily working with the families in our programs, they're here to make this a community that's strong, make sure that everyone is cared for. And I would like you to take a quick minute to just look at an overview. Just know, before that happens, this is our version of reality TV. We've wanted to do Momversations for a while. This is unscripted, this is live, and you've seen a lot of the Zoom calls lately and some of the things that happen. But hopefully here today, we can get through this together. And if we have any moments that you will bear with us. I also want you to hit the love button, like button, even if you don't like, so that we know that you're out there and that you're listening. So share, do some Facebook uh, live watch parties, you know, keep, Keep it going so that people can hear the information about what we're doing here at St. Anne's. Thank you. Just check out this quick video.
The family advocates are awesome and they're so helpful and they genuinely want you to grow as a person and help us succeed and they've done that for me and many other girls. My kids are happy. We have a place to sleep every night and that means a lot to me. I was like 10, 11, my first time that I lived on the streets. And in a lot of ways, St. Anne's became my family. They were the ones that were there through the rough times when I wanted to cry. So I felt so much better and relaxed and safe. Now that I'm here at St. Anne's, I do feel like I'm helping somebody and that I'm giving back. I love St. Anne's. Wow. That's always powerful every time I see that because I also love St. Anne's. And, you know, as the comments come through, this is live, so I am paying attention to a few of them. And, you know, it was just, um, you know, amazing to see some of the things that have come up. You know, some of the services we've expanded, when I talk about our permanent supportive housing, we recognize early on that there were times when, you know, we had a program and someone could stay until they were 18. And then we realized we need some more services and we worked in partnership with the social services in the area and we were able to expand to the transitional housing. So we have folks that are 18 to 24 in that place. And then we have our permanent supportive housing where we're able to have adults. So we're glad that we've been responsive to the community and able to provide the services so that everyone has an opportunity to be successful. Now, speaking of successful, we are going to transition and speak to someone who had a child here at St. Anne's and her name is Yancy Naranjo. She is amazing. Yancy, had a child here when, in the 90s. That is her son now, an adult who's working in the field of graphic design. Yancy works in commercial real estate. She is also the chair of our board of trustees. Now you talk about a full circle moment. That's us here at our Evening of Angels last year. We weren't able to have it this year um, because the pandemic was starting right at the time when we were about to have it. But join us October 25th. We'll be getting together. And even if it's virtual, there's so many ways that we can connect and support all those angels in our community who help us do what we have to do. So Yancy is going to join us. She's an amazing board member who provides her gifts and talents on a regular basis. Welcome, Yancy. Hi, I, I don't know if we can hear you. Can we hear you? So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure, oh, there we go. Now we can hear you are muted. And that's a great thing because I'm tired of being on the calls where we hear all this crazy background noise. So I am glad you were muted and now we can hear you. Yancy, we're so glad that we can have you virtually today. Um, tell people a little bit about your journey. You're a mom, you're uh, working commercial real estate. You've known what it's like to have a child under, you know, challenging circumstances and, and people now are challenged with, you know, the coronavirus and dealing with parents and, you know, the sandwich generation. But tell us a little bit about your journey and the fact that you're full circle moment to be able to be the chair here um, of our board of trustees. Well, Lorna, um, it's so great to see you and I'm really happy to be here. Very excited for our very first Momversations. Um, it, it has definitely been a full circle journey for, for me, and I'm so happy to be the chair of the Foundation of Trustees and to serve for St. Anne's, who really helped me in my time of need and gave me the opportunity that I needed in order to be successful as an individual and in life and as a mother. Um, so my journey began back in 1992 when I first arrived at St. Anne's, and Ever since that, my, my life changed because you're taking a child that's coming in from going from foster home to foster home to foster home. And then here you arrive to this incredible foundation, this organization. I thought it was a mansion <laughs> when I first arrived. I mean, St. Anne's is just beautiful. So I was one of the very first residents actually to um, live in the new tower that was built in 1992. Um, and that was that was quite an amazing um, experience for someone like myself who was coming in pregnant, scared, didn't know what was going to happen. Um, and then St. Anne's came in and provided me all the tools that I needed, provided housing, food, medical care for my son. I was able to finish school. I was able to gain skills to help me be successful and move on after I left St. Anne's. 
Um, and ever since that, obviously, my journey has been up and down, just like anybody's. You know, you're in your 20s trying to figure things out. Um, no different other than I have a young son um, who is absolutely amazing and made that journey even easier for me because he's he's just been quite a blessing and very, very easy to uh, to parent <laughs> um, and he's just been an absolute joy and still support. We're very close um, from our journey together, which which Nico always, you know, when we talk about St. Anne's, Nico has a huge, huge place in his heart for St. Anne's. And so anytime we get together and we and we talk about the past or our experiences, he always says, I am so grateful for St. Anne's because they didn't just help you, mom. They helped you, but they also helped me. And it's and I've been really enjoying this journey with you. So it's it's been great. I love that you said that because the other part of that is it's a generational. It's a it, what we're doing is impacting generations to come, and that's actually a part of you know our mission and our our, our slogan in terms of we're working with you. We've supported you and Nico and Nico's children down the line, and it makes an impact um, on a long term basis that. Um, is so significant for people to recognize that. And we're so thankful for you that you basically, you could have left, you know, received the services, which is fine, but you took the time to come back and say, let me help that next generation. Okay, I've had my son, but let me come back and see how I can help all those other mothers who come in scared, um, not sure what to do. Some people are um, asked to leave their home. You know, some people have a variety of challenges. They've um, suffered various abuses and trauma. So talk about what it is that caused you to kind of overcome, obviously with our support, but the fear, and then get to a place where you say, now I can give back. Um, as soon as I left St. Anne's or before that, I always knew actually at the time when I had my counselor, um, I told her, I'm so grateful I don't know how I'm going to make my journey back to St. Anne's, but as an adult, my goal is to come back and serve in some way. I just don't know what that is quite yet. Um, so I knew that before I even left St. Anne's and, and my journey back into St. Anne's actually happened through work. Um, so I, I met um, one of my brokers, his wife was working at St. Anne's and that's how we were reconnected back in 2015. Um, so as soon as I knew that I jumped on the opportunity and, you know, I, I told her at the time, I really want to be a part of St. Anne's, whatever you need me to do to be a service, I am here for you. And, um, shortly after I joined the board of trustees That's and I'm so happy to do so. But, um, that fear, um, I think that for myself, when I was thrown into that situation, my fears shifted from being unsafe to, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now with a young son? How am I going to take care of him? How am I going to succeed in life? How am I going to go back to school? What kind of job? I mean, all of those fears now, because now it's on my shoulders, yes. right? Yes. And that's um, a lot to have on the shoulders of someone who's young. Um, and, and those are stressors that people are feeling. So you're dealing with this, you're young, you don't know what to do. We always talking about, talk about the fact that parenting doesn't come with a handbook, but you were able to get the support and the guys that you need to bring you back full circle. So in this moment, you know, one of the things we want to talk about, um, is, are the stresses of motherhood. And I don't want to cut you off. I want you to continue, but I want you to relay that fear and that concern of how to move forward under the guise of this pandemic in terms of thinking about how stressful that is for young mothers and mothers in general who are having children and they can't even bring people in. Sometimes in the waiting room, I had a niece who just had a baby and only one person can come in. You can't yeah. have the supports that you were able to have in the home because of social distancing. So what, how can you relate maybe some of the feelings around that to your experience? Well, to my experience, um, my experience has been a little bit more uh, simplified where, you know, Nico, he's 26 now. Mm -hmm. He lives down the street. Um, he's self-isolated and quarantined, not self-isolated, sorry. He's quarantined um, with his significant other. 
Um, and so we're keeping our circle really small, uh, making sure that we're very careful wearing our masks. You know, pre-COVID, Nico and I would get together once a week, um, at least maybe have lunch or dinner. Um, now that makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, it's It was very difficult not being able to see him um, for the first few weeks. Okay. Um, and then we would just FaceTime. But I'm really grateful because we are able to still come together and there's no fear of maybe infecting anyone else because we're staying away from anyone else that we feel would be more susceptible. Yeah. High risk um, populations. Exactly. Yeah. But I do have, my friends have had different experiences, which I feel for them because I, I can't even imagine. So for example, I have a, a really good friend of mine whose children reside in another state yeah. and so the, the bi-monthly trips were cut down to zero. Yeah, it's very difficult. And they haven't been able to see each other, and that's been very difficult. Um, but now the travel restrictions are lifted, which is great, but we're still in a pandemic. So there's a lot of natural uh, concern there of maybe bringing something over or taking something back or transferring it to someone else. So those fears are, are real, however... It's our responsibility as parents to make sure that everyone's got great communication, that we're taking all the precautions necessary that are needed, and you know, and just stay connected yes. with your family through FaceTime, through yeah. Face, uh, uh, Facebook, yeah. uh, through Instagram. There's so many mediums that you can continue to stay connected so you don't feel that distance and, yes. you, and you don't feel that emptiness inside of you that you're so used to being with your family. Yeah. Yeah. Family is so important. Exactly. Yeah. So Absolutely. thank you for sharing that because as we're talking about moms, we're talking about younger moms, we're talking about moms with adult children, there's still some of the concerns. We're worried about our children. We're worried making sure that our adult children are also following those guidelines, that they're safe. And when we talk about the stressors around the, the implications of the coronavirus, it gets down to a, a, a level of fear of our health and safety. And that is going to cause anxiety for, for anyone. It really does. It really truly does because I, mean, I have friends that have underlying conditions that I'm nervous to go visit. You know, I'm, I'm nervous to, to go see anyone that's, you know, any of my grandparents or any of my family members that are over a certain age that I know either have diabetes or some kind of heart condition or, or, or even an immune um, disorder like lupus. Yeah. So you put you put all that into consideration, and your immediate response is, okay, I don't want to get anyone infected. Yes. Even though you may not, you may feel healthy. Um, you don't know. It could be asymptomatic. Right? Yes. Exactly. Yes. So that's been the biggest problem is that a lot of people don't take this seriously. Therefore, you the re you have to limit your exposure because you don't know who's taking it seriously or who isn't taking and that's it seriously. the key and how much they care about your health and well-being yeah. and your family members, mm -hmm. your children, newborns. I have friends yes. that have babies just in recent yes. months, you know, and how we can't go visit them. So it, it definitely has been trying. Yeah. Um, what? And the anxiety definitely kicks in. <laughs> yeah. So we talk about, and we're, we're going to talk to Dr. Uh, Hodge soon. Um, what do you, say in terms of someone who's parenting or just colleagues and friends because we had to adapt here at St. Anne's you know the folks we're an essential organization we have to come to work daily to make sure all the people we serve are provided for but we have our board meetings you know electronically I'm thankful for the technology but what advice would you give someone who's trying to manage during this time stressing as a parent of an adult child um, and, and missing family and missing those connections. Um, some of the tools that we may have given you back when you were here in terms of self-care and, and just having a level of understanding, how can you maybe apply a few tips for the folks that are watching you here? Because you're dynamic and amazing. I, the first time I met you uh, as I came on here as the CEO, I was like, she rocks. She loves the folks who are on our campus, the families that come in, and that's something you know that's very important to me, that we don't treat individuals who come through our doors as if they're clients or in a sense that they are um, 
no different than us. We want people to treat everyone who is in our program and participates as if we would treat our family. So tell me a little bit about that. Um, as far as I think communication information is so I'm, I'm a person that thrives off of information. If you ask any, any of my friends, I like data. I work with a lot of data. And so for me, I'm a very much of, of a facts person. So, um, for me, it's all about dialogue, communication, also making sure you're checking in because people handle things differently. So there's a lot of people that will not express to you, this is really stressing me. I have a lot of anxiety. Um, this is making me wonder what my future holds. All these natural yes. thoughts that go into our minds in times of any uncertainty, panic mode, what do we do next? Well, let's just take a deep breath. Yes. Just kind of take it one step at a time. Keep your circle small. Stay safe. Stay healthy. But more, most importantly, make sure you're watching over your little ones too because they're very susceptible. And even though this, this was another conversation that we had was in the very beginning, no one really knew yes. who was catching it. Yes. At, at first they were saying children couldn't catch exactly. it. Exactly, and that has changed that has changed. Children can absolutely catch it, and they, they have. Yes. And so it's our responsibility as parents um, to also to relay that message to other parents, like, hey, you know, I don't know if you heard, but please be safer than sorry. Yes. You know, protect your children. They don't know. Yes. Um, so, and there's a lot of preconceived notions that children don't have to wear masks, and I've actually seen it. Yes. So... That, that really blows my mind, and yeah. I'd be really interested to, yeah. to know. And they've more. talked, yeah, and they've talked about children over a certain age uh, yeah. group should wear masks. And I know it's hard, it's uncomfortable, you know, it's difficult sometimes for us, but we have to do it as adults when we have to model that for our teens. And then for some of our children, they, they're making some amazing masks. I'd like to say thank you, Yancy, for being an amazing uh, member. You talked about coming on as a trustee, but you have to recognize not only did you come in as a trustee, you became the chair. So that's significant. We're very proud of you and we're thankful for you sharing your journey with us. We um, you know, are limited on time, but we wanted to make sure we heard from you and you continue to do amazing things. And Yancy's always the one saying, okay, I have an idea for a fundraiser or let's try this or let's do this. And she's done some amazing things to help us stay viable during this time. Because as you know, resources are diminished for many organizations because of funding. And so when we have people like you and we have many others like you who are able to say, I was there, I know what the benefits are. I know how St. Anne's has impacted my life. We thank you for sharing your story. And your son often comes with you as well. So we're thankful for Nico. Thank, thank you, you so God. much, Yancy. Really appreciate it. Love being here. Thank you. So we're getting ready to move to our next uh, guest here. We're excited that, you know, Momversations is definitely our live broadcast that is sharing just some thoughts and some information in reference to, you know, St. Anne's. Our next guest is coming on. She is Dr. Alicia Little Hodge. She is a licensed clinical psychologist who focuses on anxiety, works with a variety of children and adults. She actually has some specialty working with teen parents and has done that for years as well. We're thankful that she's going to come on and share some tips and some ideas. She's also a young mother, so she's doing the juggle and the battle of, um, you know, managing in this quarantine cycle um, in terms of us being safer at home. So I'd like to uh, ask um, Dr. Alicia Hodge to join us. Hello. Hi. Hi. We're so excited to have you here today to be able to share some information on, you know, what it's like now for um, you're a young mom, you know, you're a mom, not a young mom, but you're a mom of a young child, clarification, yeah. and you're dealing with that in this moment, but you're a psychologist who works, um, your, your tagline line is slay your anxiety. So there's a lot of slaying that needs to happen right now because many of us are anxious. Tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what you think about, you know, parenting during this time frame and what parents can do 
to help relieve some of that anxiety because you got people who are homeschooling, trying to juggle full-time jobs, trying to balance, and the balance isn't there because it's out of balance. Um, I keep saying people are looking for certainty in uncertain times. So tell us a little bit about your thoughts. Yes, um, I think you're exactly right. Um, ultimately, the reality of it is, is that there's not any certainty. And I often tell people um, that certainty and anxiety, uncertainty and anxiety go hand in hand because when you feel anxious, you want to have structure, you want to have order, you want to know what's next and what's happening. And none of us really know exactly what's happening right now. Um, I think that for myself, that experience has come through parenting. Um, my daughter is almost nine months old, so I have been managing uncertainty now for nine months, but <laughs> I think it's interesting um, to see what that juggling act looks like, as you mentioned. Um, I am doing teletherapy, which is similar to this online, um, but that has required a lot of scheduling, a lot of um, trying to figure out how to keep her quiet, even right now. I'm hoping that she stays quiet during this interview. Um, but parents are taking on tasks that they haven't normally had, which are things like you said, homeschooling, um, a lot of daycares are closed. So people, um, you know, we often use this phrase work from home, but the reality is, is that working from home is a lot different. You usually don't have extra people there. Um, you are able to turn on and turn off and it can feel comfortable at times, but right now we're quarantined at home and we're working and we're child rearing and we're homeschooling and we're trying to stay connected with family and friends and we don't have answers about when it's gonna end. So I definitely would expect people to feel more anxious. Um, and I want people to understand that it's okay to have moments that feel concerning, but the reality of it is, is that we just have to look to certain tips that of course I can offer on how to maintain that structure at home um, how to tell yourself that it's okay if I don't have an answer or I'm not doing things perfectly because the reality of it is that we're sort of working on the fly and unfortunately at times we're surviving instead of thriving. And you raise a good point. I remember making a post on uh, uh, my Facebook or one of my social media accounts and I said, be gentle with yourself. I wrote this really long post about being gentle with yourself because so many people were saying we need to come out of this pandemic with all these things accomplished and done. You know, we need to have all these amazing things because we have all this um, time on our hands. And I said, some people oh, at this moment, the best they can do is survive. And so how do you kind of deal with the fact that or how, what, what do you think, you know, this this pressure to, of course, we want to be productive, but we could be only be as productive as we emotionally feel. So how do people kind of manage that? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I actually I also made a post about this idea of um, the temptation is to be overly productive and get to all the things that we haven't been able to do, but our time is really limited. Mm -hmm. um, and also just physiologically and biology, biology wise, when we are in a state of fear, we are not able to be as productive and planful and creative as we would like to be. Mm -hmm. So it is important to adjust our expectations and have grace with ourselves and realize maybe I need to just get through today and have one thing to look forward to tomorrow, I've really encouraged people to try to find those moments, especially parents um, and mothers specifically, to decompress um, between work and that transition back into home life. I do have some friends with young children who are sort of telling me, my child is so busy during the day that I'm actually having to wait until after they're asleep to do my work, mm -hmm. so I don't have much time to myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm encouraging people to find, even if it's five minutes of space, to kind of downshift and tell yourself, I'm doing the best that I can. Um, I am going to take care of myself because I need to take care of myself in order to give to others. Um, also, I'm encouraging people to be creative. So like we're on this online platform now, we're social distancing, but you don't have to be disconnected. Okay. We're trying to reach out to family and friends. Um, I'm also finding that I'm trying to make time to have FaceTime chats with my friends, especially the ones who are moms, even if we could just vent for a little while. Um, we have group text messages and take pictures of like, look at this floor, it's a mess, but oh well. Um, <laughs> so it's important to know that it may not be picture perfect and that's not really, shouldn't be the goal right now. The goal should just be, how can I 
take care of myself and my family as best as possible. And that's great uh, feedback because I think, um, I know I even said to some of our staff members, you know, I said, this isn't the time to try to be, you know, the homeschool teacher of the year, you know, putting that level of stress on yourself because just imagine if you don't have time to take care of yourself. So you can imagine in our environment that our staff are working with young moms and, and, you know, some moms are, you know, a little older, but they are not able to you know, be out freely. And young people who enjoy going to high school, you're not able to go out to school anymore. So you're inside, you know, we're providing many activities and I'm thankful for people who have actually, you know, done drives and fundraisers to give them activities and puzzles and all the different things. But, you know, what would you say um, would be something that, you know, are there any tips outside of, you know, taking care of yourself, any thoughts that you could have, any words of wisdom for them in terms of not beating themselves up? Because I, let me, let me add this to it. I was talking to someone the other day who said, you know, I feel bad because they feel like they're being trivial about hair and nails and things like that, you know, but as we got more into the conversation, it was about self-esteem. It was yeah. about that was their method of self-care, those small things. And so it's not about the actual item in you know discussion. It's more about the fact that the lack of self-care in terms of the way they used to have it has made them not feel so great about themselves. Plus, on top of it, the work, the stresses of parenting. And so what do you say for someone who says, well, you're being really trivial. We're in a pandemic and, you know, you're just worried about these surface things when people are dying. Of course, there's a spectrum and there's nothing in comparison to that. But how can, back to that being gentle with yourself, what do you think we could say to someone and even our parents who are like, I need to go get our hair done or, you know, I, I need to go out. I, you know, they're missing graduations, proms, they're missing so much. What would you say? Yeah, I think there's a high level of emotionality that's happening for all of us. You just touched on some good points about we're not able to celebrate certain milestones, whether that's births or graduations or proms or even small things. Like if you have a routine of I go, I mean, I go get my nails done. Mine aren't done right now. I don't feel so great about that. Um, and ultimately, I think we need to be gentle with ourselves, but also other people. Yeah. Small acts are ways that we can establish control. Like if I can just go get my eyebrows done, I would feel very accomplished right now. But the reality of it is, is that I don't have that available to me. So sometimes when people are making seemingly a big deal about these small tasks, it's about them saying, I wish that I could just indulge in something yeah. that makes me feel good. I wish that I could go back to my typical routine. So for all of us who don't have that at this time, I encourage you to try to reflect and say, what are the things that make me feel special? What makes me feel good? Um, how can I spend some time with myself? Whether that's quiet time, whether that's talking with a friend, whether that's taking a bath, which has been my new thing. Um, whether, <laughs> whether that, and you know, I'm not a big fan of emotional eating, but sometimes it is just, I wanna have a nice meal. I wanna do something indulgent and that's not by the rules and not be so strict and rigid anymore. Well, in full disclosure to everyone watching, that is how I've been coping, emotional eating. They say television, Facebook, all of these things add 10 pounds. I've already added my own 10 pounds, so therefore you see an additional 20. But thank you so much. Um, one thing I will say in full disclosure, and I'll have, um, you can um, add Yancy back on, and we're all going to, if we can, I don't know if we can all be there at the same time. I'm not sure. Um, but what I'd like to say is, um, you know, both of you, thank you for being here, but I'd like to share in the spirit of full transparency, you know, Yancey talked about being a young mom. And one of the reasons um, I'm passionate about this work, um, it's a personal and professional uh, journey for me, is because I too was a young mom. And the statistics for young mothers in terms of success around, you know, education and all those things are pretty dismal. And here at St. Anne's, the work that we're doing is trying to break those cycles. And I am glad to be able to say one of our guests today, Dr. Hodge, is my daughter. She's the daughter that I had when I was a teenager. And to be able to have her on here and share as a professional is a testament to what we are able to provide when we give support, guidance, skills, training, 
care and love for young mothers. I was not at St. Anne's, but what I received, I want everyone else who may have challenged backgrounds to receive. So when someone says to a young mom that they can't ascend to certain levels and that their children can't ascend to certain levels, I will challenge them, them each time because I'm living proof, Yancey's living proof, Alicia's living proof in terms of her being the child of a young mom. So you're supporting St. Anne's and supporting what we do is not about supporting teen pregnancy. What it's supporting is hope. What it's supporting is a choice that was made to try to parent a child to the best of their ability, and we're providing the safety net, we're providing the guidance, and we're providing opportunities for optimal life. And success is different for every individual. So I want to thank both of you. And if you have any closing words that you'd like to say, please say them now or forever hold your peace. Well, I'll go ahead and, and uh, say my closing words, Lorna. I just want to say that, um, you know, you have been an incredible, fierce leader. And I'm so happy that you're our leader and how you've taken this organization. You and Dana and SB and the rest of the team has been incredible. Um, it's, you know, I came to St. Anne's at a very critical age and I left with hope. And I'm back at St. Anne's to provide that same hope to our girls and our families of St. Anne's. And that is my overall goal. Yeah. Stay safe, stay healthy, protect each other, care for each other, check in on each other. Um, as we, a lot of us don't tend to ask for help. Um, so please be sure just to remain in contact with those that you love, uh, your friends, your family, your colleagues. Um, not everyone is okay with isolation. Most people struggle with that. Um, I know that I've had my moments of struggle since I am, you know, I live on my own. My son lives, you know, in his own place. So it, it, it is a bit of a, of a challenge, uh, being in your own space and just you by yourself. So just stay connected, use all your mediums and, um, come visit us at St. Anne's. Yes. Like, uh, yes. We would love we would love to show you our facility. Yes, it's once the order is lifted, we are going to definitely, and actually part of, and I'm going to go to Alicia, but one of the things that we want to do, hopefully on our next conversations, because we plan on trying to continue this, is to do a virtual walkthrough, because people often wonder what it looks like here. And so thank you, and I'm going to go to Dr. Hodge. Um, yes, what Yancy has said was beautiful, actually. Um, and I would like to add to that and say um, that I think that St. Anne's is doing really great work um, from as a person who is a child, of an adult child now, of a young mother, um, and has worked in the past with pregnant or parenting teenagers. Um, and now from a mother's perspective and as a psychologist, all of the things are so needed, the programs, the support, just developmentally, um, and also stressing the fact that a young mom is still a mom and can be very much so a great mom and an even greater mom with support. Um, and for everyone that's dealing with any stress or anxiety during this time to lean on their social networks, to lean on their natural supports. And what I mean by that are friends and family, but also don't um, be afraid to utilize professional services. I heard that St. Anne's has community services um, and offering clinical therapy. services yes. yeah, services so um, just be open to understanding that this is a stressful time and that those stressors may exceed your capacity and it is more than okay to reach out to a professional to support you that's a great point and at the end we'll have a few resources but yes we do provide those clinical services for everyone um, that is in need of those in our program and in working with youth all the way up you know, to adulthood. So I'd like to thank both of you for providing some of your time. I, I, I heard a little baby crying a little, or making noise in the background. So that was the timer. Maven is ready for her mom. Um, but thank you so much for being here. And we appreciate you being on the very first episode of Momversations. Thank you. That's so exciting. Thank you for having thank me. You. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. So...
We are moving on with our live presentation. As I mentioned, this is our uh, our version of uh, reality television. I'm so excited. Uh, let me know you're out there. Let's see some comments, some thumbs, some different things that are going on on our Facebook page. That helps us to continue um, our conversation. At this point, you know, um, we talked about motherhood. We talked about our stressors. We talk about, you know, everyone that who, you know, helps St. Anne's. I'd like to um, take a moment to, to show a video because when we talk about being an essential organization, what that means is that everything that we've done over the years, we're continuing to do. So while we're crafting out and making sure our staff are safe and working to ensure that they can have the opportunities to do their work, um, that's a whole layer of work. We joke about we have our normal work and then we have our pandemic, you know, COVID related work. But we had an amazing event recently and we're only able to be successful based on the support that we receive from you all, whether it's in-kind support, whether it's financial donations. And so we had a drive with Hello Bello as a partner supporting us. We had an opportunity to give away 98,000 diapers. Um, and the lines were wrapped around the, the neighborhood and we give out food daily from nine to 12. You should see all the people coming in because hunger is really right. A real situation. It's real before, but now with people losing jobs, millions of people out of work, we need to provide for the community. So I want us to take a little look at a video that happened here recently. Hi, my name is Christine Payne. I'm here with Hello Bello. At Hello Bello, we make plant-based premium products for babies and families. One of our core values is giving back, and we're here today because federal assistance programs don't provide resources for buying many of these family essentials. So we've partnered with our friends at Pathways LA and St. Anne's, which is where we are today, to give away 98,000 diapers and 1,500 hand sanitizers to those in our communities that need the most help. We're going to continue to give help throughout the course of the pandemic and beyond. Thank you for having me. Hi, I'm Lorna Little, the CEO of St. Anne's, and we're here at St. Anne's today for an amazing event, a diaper giveaway. We are so thankful during this critical time in our country and in our world to be able to provide support through resources provided through Hello Bello, SoCal Honda, and Pathways. 98,000 diapers is so incredibly needed during this time. We are also giving away 1,500 hand sanitizers. We're thankful that we continue to provide what's needed. We do it on a regular basis, but today to be able to have amazing partners like Hello Bello, SoCal Honda, and Pathways, we are meeting the needs of the community. Thank you. So you got to see what happened on that day. Um, that particular drive was one day, but on a regular basis, we're providing food supports and services. Um, we're preparing our young folks for the next level. And you see some of the photos here. One of the events that we would normally have in May um, is an event that we have where our mothers come out. Um, they're dressed up. We provide them with opportunities to have on gowns or, you know, whatever they would like to wear to feel beautiful. As you see here, you know, makeup artists come out. We've had many events. This is some of the photos from our style, style fund event. And we give the opportunities to make sure that they can feel their best. And that opportunity, we have a DJ, we have a sit down dinner, we have volunteers and staff, as you can see, working with the children. It is an amazing event that honors motherhood. And we know that when mothers and families and anyone has an opportunity to be respected and to feel good about themselves, it heightens their chance for success. So I call it the everything event. Dana laughs at me because I say it's the everything event. I mean, it's the quinceanera they missed. It's the sweet 16 they didn't have. It's the opportunity for the prom that they may have missed because they may have been parenting. It's an opportunity for all of those things. And it's interesting because it just came to me. I said, this is live, that during this era, people who are not experiencing graduations and other rites of passages 
they're feeling some of those same feelings that some of our moms feel because of their situation that they're not able to have those experiences. So it's important for us to provide those opportunities. Now, I would like to ask you all to join in and ans- ask some questions. We're we're going to continue to show, you know, a few photos and we can and, and continue to dialogue because I think it's important to understand that when we don't have the opportunity for our evening of angels fundraiser that we were supposed to have at the end of March, that it's important that we receive support from the community and support looks very different. We have someone yesterday, a friend and a colleague and her daughter dropped off some wipes and diapers and feminine products and all of those things. We need that. We were thankful to Marsha and her daughter. We're thankful when we get a, a big uh, donation from you know some of the groups, and, and Dana will have some of those listed. We're looking, oh, somebody just asked a great question. I am paying attention. Do we have any volunteer opportunities? And I love your name, Lorna. Um, you know, yes, we do have volunteer opportunities. You know, right now, during this period, we're not having people come on campus, but guess what? We're an organization that pivots pretty quickly, and we figured out we can use the technology to have people read to some of our children. So if you're interested in reading to our early childhood education groups, the children, or even some of the children who in other parts of our program, give us a call. I had one of our board members recently. She said, you know what? I have children at home. I know how hectic it is. For us to, you know, keep finding activities, a toy gets old pretty quickly. She got together with all of her friends and came and, you know, delivered uh, um, all these toys for our families, for the children, and then um, things for the teenagers too, and the young people. So from puzzles to books, you know, we are limiting some of the donations. But if we're getting new items shipped to us right now, we're able to accept them. Some of you may not know we have a thrift store. That, you know, the money raised at that thrift store comes to St. Anne's. So once everything is over and people feel safe, that is something you can also visit our St. Anne's thrift store. So let's see. Is there another question? Oh, it says, please don't forget to, you know, connect with our volunteer um, coordinator, assistant director. So Aj is a, a wonderful person who can help you make those connections. So. What other questions do you have? I see the thumbs and the hearts and I appreciate it. But do you understand that we've grown from this small organization where we were a maternity hospital to an organization where we're almost at 500 employees, that we are about to join a new community in Linwood with our Early Childhood Education Center? We're expanding. And in order to do that, we need your support and your help. Um, we like to get suggestions for any future mom versations. And we'd also like to ask anyone who's watching that is a professional who specializes in working with moms and families to contact us. I wait and look to see if we're getting any new topics in. One of the things that I will say is that we need to talk about the fact that, you know, we just are thankful. We're thankful for everyone, our board members, the board of directors, the board of trustees, our stakeholders, our community partners for being a part of our support system, being a part of helping us. I have a story I wasn't going to share, but I will say really quickly. Um we had someone that is connected with our program recently um, for various reasons. Many people have received stimulus checks. This is someone who works really hard, provides support to the program, volunteers, amazing, dynamic, intelligent woman. Um, she's married. She has six children, uh, but times are hard. And for us to learn that due to a variety of reasons, she wasn't awarded a stimulus check. Someone who has to feed and and clothe and house six children, of course, we provide resources and supports here, 
but she lives in the community. And we brought that to our board to say, can we do something as a staff and a board to support her? And one of our board members just stopped the process and said, I've got this, I'll take care of this, and wrote a check that was more than equivalent to that payment. I raise that because every single person has an opportunity to help, whether directly or indirectly. And so, you know, we serve, you know, we serve in upwards of 2,000 families. I'm looking at questions coming in. We serve upwards of 2,000 families within our program a year. The help we need now, diapers, uh, wipes, masks. Some of you are making some amazing masks. And let me tell you, we take those, but we also take the medical grade. And I don't mean the N95s because I know those are limited and we want our first responders. But financial donations are always a blessing. I understand that people are challenged right now financially. People don't have jobs, many individuals. But those of you that do have resources, think about how you can help. I always tell people it's not equal gifts, but it's equal sacrifice. So one person may give, give $10, and that's equivalent to somebody else giving $1,000. i would like to thank you for joining us today. We're going to continue to answer some questions. Let me see if I miss. We're going to end a little early, but we want to tell you about our resources. If you're struggling and you're watching this, obviously everyone connected with St. Anne's, they will be able to work with our staff and our team members to get their needs met. But you could be watching from around the country. That's one of the things I really love um, about doing this in this method. Right now, we're all over the country, and we actually could be all over the world. So there's a national parent helpline. There's Parents Anonymous. There's so many things. But I see another question um, from the watch party. They'd like to know what type of items are for resale, and where is the St. Anne's Thrift Store? So I can get the address for you, but the thrift store is in Burbank, California. And I can actually have someone give me the actual address because I don't know it by heart. I, um, I've gone there and I've seen the amazing things we do. And Dolores and her uh, family have run that thrift store for, on behalf of St. Anne's for many years. It is amazing. Um, and then people can donate. Not right now, obviously during the, um, time of Safer at Home, we're not doing that, but someone is handing me the address. It's temporarily closed, obviously, but is 3315 West Burbank Boulevard and we'll, um, Burbank, California. So what we will do is actually I'll ask someone if they can put that in the chat so that people can visit that. That would be wonderful. So thank you. So please there it is. Look at that. Our folks are so talented. I'm telling you, we're ready to take this show on the road. Please share this after the fact. Please tell us what you'd like to see on the next um, program. We are thankful for everyone that continues to support us. Success looks different for every individual. We will have some people who will be the college graduate to go on. Someone's going to be in my seat one day. I thoroughly believe that, and I tell the young women that all the time. But sometimes being successful is breaking generational cycles. Sometimes being successful is learning that they are of extreme value and that they are loved and cared for it. And they have the opportunity, as Dr. Hodge says, to be the best mother that they can be. In the safe environment with our amazing team, I'd like to thank all of our staff who come out daily to do what needs to be done for everyone, especially those in our housing departments who are faced daily with meeting the need. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you for the next Mombersations. If I've missed anything, it's live television. I painted my own nails, I did my own hair. This is where we are. These are the small things, but they're big things because guess what? We're capable of pivoting and doing what we need to do to get the message out. I'd like to thank the entire team that helped us get this live here today. We're very grateful. And go to stanans.org to learn more about what we do, to provide us with any support. 
and we look forward to the opportunities for our next conversations. And volunteers, donors, thank you. Continue to support us. Um, we will do um, all we can to keep you abreast. And if you said, well, I just learned about this from a, a watch party, please follow us on social media. St. Anne's Today and St. For So if you can go to our website in terms of, you know, checking us out, but St. Anne's Today on our Instagram and follow us on Facebook. We appreciate it. So thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you next time. And once again, this is live. This is the realest reality show there is. Not the foolishness that you see sometimes. This is about changing lives and making a difference. Thank you.